morning, you guys. Trev, Smashworks. How are you guys doing this morning? Today we're gonna to talk about something really new and uh, I don't know if anybody's even really addressed it, but I'll tell you this, it's common, it's really common. I got a message from a super good friend of mine, Jordan, and she was getting some uh, some jaw pain after uh, starting to increase her Olympic lifting in, uh, in all her workouts. And if you watch Olympic lifters, you watch really elite Olympic lifters, lifters they do what's called the dynamic yawn, right? They open that mouth and they jam their tongue into the roof of the mouth. Now, some of you guys know this, some of you guys don't, but when you take the, your tongue and you jam it into the roof of your mouth, you stabilize all the structures in your skull and in your, uh, in your, in your jaw, forces them all to contract, but not contract with a clenched position. See, the problem is, a lot of us, we lift like this. Now, I know you probably didn't understand what I said, but I said you lift like this. So we clench the masseters and the temporalis muscles really hard. We put a couple of hundred pounds of force on the jaw and on this disc here, there's a disc in here in the TMJ. This is a temporal uh, uh, mandibular joint. Now, TMJ, not a disease. TMD, a problem. Tempora temporal mandibular, say that three times. It's at 5.30 in the morning. Temporal mandibular dysfunction is, uh, is when this disc has a lot of issues with it. It's just like the discs in the spine, a little small rudimentary disc in between, the, uh, in between the bones, allows the bones to pivot up and down, allows the jaw to open and close, and a little bit of a hyperextension when we open our jaw really wide. Now imagine this, you're doing all your lifts, you're doing great, you're making great gains in the gym, and your jaw starts to hurt. You get this aching pain down across the, uh, the ramus and the mandible of the jaw, and, uh, and it's shutting down your lifting. It starts to give you headaches, gives you pain behind the eye, radiates, radiates up uh, behind the base of the skull, goes even down in through the neck. I'm gonna show you how to clear this stuff out. Um, and the other thing is, I'm gonna tell you, when you crank your head back in any lift, whether it's a squat or, or anything like that, you uncouple the, uh, the central nervous system. Central nervous system doesn't like that. So it doesn't do well with a stretch, so, so much to the point that, uh, well, it doesn't stretch. So when you put a tensile load on the CNS, it doesn't conduct a signal very well, and what it does is it dumps all that horsepower that you're generating neurologically that's going into the muscles, and it dumps all that. So you actually shut yourself down by probably 20 or 30%. So imagine getting 20 or 30% more out of your lifts just by stabilizing your central nervous system. So right off the bat, in all your lifts, I'll add one thing, I call it, uh, call it Trev's L rule, a smash work L rule. Take your finger, put it like this, that, I'll go to the side, is where your spine's supposed to be. Your neck should be like this, nice and stable. So if you have to look up, look up with your eyes. Don't look up with your head. When you crank your head back like this, you uncouple everything. And I know a lot of you guys squat, wham, head cranked all the way up, trying to pull yourself up into the ceiling. You know what, mm, don't do that. It's gonna trash your spine. Imagine this, go do a bench press, lay on the bench, load up like 315, super lightweight, just go for reps. And then take your head and dangle it off the back like a busted chicken neck. And, uh, and go try and bench. And then let me know how that works out for you. Don't do that. I'm actually not even gonna condone that. I know I put this stuff on the internet and people start to do this stuff. Don't do that, it's gonna be really bad. So what I'm gonna have you do, is first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do something called reciprocal inhibition. So we're gonna shut off the masseter, the temporalis. We're gonna address the scalenes. Now the scalenes, there's three of them. Posterior, medial, and an anterior. And the anterior and the medial attach on the first rib and the posterior attaches on the second rib and they attach up inside here as well. And the problem is they, they have a very uh, critical function. They elevate that first rib and they elevate that second rib on deep inspiration and on rapid hard inspiration. So under metabolic load, for example, when you're, uh, when you're doing a Metcon or even you're just doing some really aggressive lifts and you're huffing and puffing, those scalenes are turning on and off dozens and dozens, if not hundreds and hundreds of times in a row, helping your body expand those lungs as wide as possible to increase oxygen input and toxin output. That's the way we work. So now imagine this, these muscles start to get really tight because when we get under a big lift and when we do a pull into a snatch, look at what I'm doing. I'm coming up, I'm doing that triple extension, I'm doing that massive shrug, you know, I'm pulling my head up and I'm, everything in here is starting to fire. Now we do that repeatedly over and over again. It starts to get tight, starts to really restrict a lot of movement, but it starts to radiate pain again, out into the jaw, behind the eye, behind the ear. You even get earaches, headaches, neck pain. And then the trap is the last one we're gonna address. That trap, it's a huge muscle. It goes from the base of the skull, the, uh, the nuchal line on the base of the skull, all the way down to T12, and then all the way out to, uh, to the apex of the shoulder, to the, uh, to the outside here, so it's gonna, capture all this stuff, two giant triangles down uh, down your back. So if you see most of us CrossFitters, we got some form of traps from all the pulling we're doing. 
Um, imagine those muscles cranking and spasming like crazy throughout the day, getting all knotted up, and that tissue turning into beef jerky, getting uh, turning into steaks on steaks that aren't moving, right? We need to undo that stuff, so I'm gonna show you how to undo those as well. So we're gonna do the scalenes, we're gonna do the masseter temporalis, I'm gonna show you how to turn off those muscles and how to strip them out with a little cross ball. Now this is gonna look funny, I'm gonna tell you that right now, because I'm gonna be laying on the floor, opening and closing my mouth like I'm underwater. But I'm gonna tell you, you're gonna strip these muscles out the same way you're gonna tack and, and, and mobilize them like anything else, except these ones are gonna be a little uncomfortable. You might shed a tear, I might shed a tear, so I might block my face. And then we're gonna smash out that trap and get it moving the way it's supposed to. So we get rid of all that jaw pain, all right? So the first one is reciprocal inhibition, super easy. What it basically means is a muscle on one side contracts, the muscle on the opposite side of that joint turns off, it's how we're designed. It's what allows us to do this. So the bicep has to relax for the tricep to engage to extend our arm. The tricep has to turn off and the bicep has to engage to allow us to contract our arm. Same thing with the jaw. So this one's super easy. I'll get in nice and close. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your fist, you put it underneath your jaw, and all you're gonna do is you're gonna try and open your jaw, your chin against your fist, which is tucked into my hand. You're just gonna try and push it against your jaw, not with your head, just with your jaw. You're just pivoting around this disc for about 10 seconds. So all you're gonna do is this. Like you're posing for a really, really goofy picture, all right? You're gonna do that three times, 10 seconds, 15 seconds. It's gonna turn these off. Now it's kind of a quick fix, temporary fix. It, it doesn't cure it, but it'll help turn these off. Do this first because it's gonna shut these off. Then we can start smashing them out. We'll do the, uh, we'll do the jaw smash next. Then we'll get into the scaling stretch and, uh, and the trapezius because this is the fun one and uh, you guys are gonna have a good laugh. So I'm gonna take the camera. We're gonna put it down here. You can see my face. It's the only time I'm ever gonna do this is I'm gonna take my jaw, I'm gonna lay on my stomach. So I'm like this, I'm cranking my head off to one side. This is normally not what I would want you to do for the cervical spine, it's not very good, it arches the back a little bit. But to unload this, you're using the weight of your head. So we got this 12 pound ball on the end of our neck. All you're gonna do is take the lacrosse ball, okay? You're gonna set your jaw, stay off. There's a, there's a point right here, you'll feel it, right in front of the ear, right in front of the, uh, the, the tragus of the ear, which is this little bump right in the front. Right in front of that is where the disc is. Don't put the ball there, it's gonna hurt like crazy. Go just below that and just above it. Just above it is the temporalis, just below it is the masseter. So you're gonna get on it. I'm already on it, super chill, relax. Now, get ready, get your funny face on, watch this. Now what I'm doing is I'm not hyperextending the jaw. I'm only opening it up, even talking like this. Jeez Louise, this is friggin' painful. Even opening and closing the jaw while talking, I can feel it. So all I'm gonna do is just this. And it, it's, oh, it's just mind-numbingly painful. And then you're gonna get on the temporalis and you're gonna do the same thing. And this is the one that's gonna refer into the jaw because even I feel that and I don't think I have touch wood. I don't have jaw pain, but holy crap, I might need to do this a little more. All right, so that's number one. You're gonna do that open and close maneuver on the, uh, on the temporalis and the masseter uh, 15 times Tamparalis, 15 times masseter, same thing on the other side. Trust me, this stuff is important, all right? Let's do the, uh, let's do the uh, trapezius smash and then we'll get down into the scalings, all right? I'm gonna take this ball so I don't fall on it. You're gonna take the, uh, you're gonna take the bar, it's gonna go really high on the trap. So right basically where the neck meets the trapezius, that's where you're gonna sit with, with, the, uh, with the bar. I loaded it up with a 45 on either side. You should do the same, not because you're gonna be moving the weight, but because what you're gonna be doing is stabilizing that bar, so you're not gonna stand up with the bar. I realize lots of you guys can throw this weight around like nothing, but it gives the bar some weight and stability so you don't have to worry about it moving around when the trap contracts. So check this out. You're gonna get under the far side like this. You're gonna take a big scissor stance, just like this. I'm gonna hold the bar with my um, inside hand and then the hand that's on the outside. I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna lock it out, I'm gonna take my palm, I'm gonna turn it up, and I'm just gonna raise my arm and then I'm gonna take my thumb and I'm gonna bring it up. I'm gonna raise my arm and then I'm gonna go to the side. Just like that. Now those three movements, you're gonna do the same thing but I'm gonna crank my head over to this side to put tension on the fascia that goes down the uh, cervical thoracic fascia that goes down through all this and really inhibits a lot of that motion. Attaches on the base of the skull, attaches all through here. The platysma, the scalings, they're all captured by this fascia. So we wanna peel out away and get this stuff moving. So you're just gonna get under there. You're gonna find a hot spot, trust me, like I found one already. It sucks. All right, so I'm gonna turn my head away. 
I'm talking loud because we got the funky music in the background. That's one. Palm up. That's two. Out to the side. That's three. You're going to go through that entire cycle, again, 10 to 15 times each trap. And go ahead and feel free to, to do a little freestyling. Move all the way up and down this. Stay off this AC joint. Don't get the bar on there. It's a bone. You don't smash out bones. The periosteum of the bones going to freaking bruise. And you guys are going to be asking me how to fix a bruise. I don't know how to do that. So just don't get bruised. So smash that stuff out on both sides, okay? That's the, set. That's the third one. So now we're going to do the, uh, the scalings. Scalings are a simple stretch. I don't want you smashing anything in here. There's a nerve down through here called the vagus nerve. I don't need any of you guys doing a vasovagal and knocking yourself out and you know having a little bit of a uh, sinkable episode on the ground. I don't need you guys passing out. So don't smash the neck, all right? Not good. Um, I'm gonna show you how to stretch it. It's super easy. Now let's see if I can pull this off. You know what I'm gonna do? Yeah, I'll make it easier. I'm not even gonna do it on the ground. We can do it, we can do it seated. So this is how you're gonna stretch the posterior, the medial, and the anterior scaling. And it's kind of a funky move. So you're gonna take your hand, you're gonna tuck it in behind you, just like this. It's not up high or anything. It's just there to kind of lock out. Right now, actually, I'm just sitting on my hand. You're gonna take your hand, you're gonna put it kind of like this. You're gonna first turn towards the armpit about 30 degrees. So I'm going 30 degrees off center, and I'm just gonna, and you'll feel it. I'm gonna do this. This is gonna hit scaling, and I'm gonna hold this. How long do we hold our stretches? Honestly, about two minutes, but don't do that for the neck. You probably go about 30 seconds. Okay, there. Then you're gonna bring your head straight. Then you're gonna do this. This is gonna hit the medial scaling. And then you're gonna take your chin and you're gonna do this and you're gonna look up. This is the only time I'm gonna say it's okay to look up. I just finished telling you not to do that. So this, for this stretch, you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna go this way and you're gonna crank like this, not too hard. And you're just gonna hang out like this. This is gonna hit all three of those scalenes. Do it on both sides. We're gonna be asymmetrical. We're gonna have one side more than the other. You're gonna notice that with your jaw as well. You're gonna have a lot of pain on one side versus the other. We tend to have a, an asymmetrical bite, so our jaw tends to track. I'm gonna go over how to get your jaw to track right as well, but that's, that's another video. Otherwise, you guys are gonna be watching me yap here for days. So that's the thing. Make sure when you're doing your lifts, you're doing your Oli lifts, you're doing any lifts. Loosen up your jaw. Take an extra, take like 3% like of your brain power and tell your brain to just unlock the jaw. The other 97% you can use to crank out those huge numbers and take your tongue and drive it into the roof of your mouth and let your jaw go a little bit relaxed. You're, you're gonna, I promise you this, you'll lift more, you'll feel stronger. It sounds so simple, simple to do, which means it's simple not to do, all right? This is how you loosen up that jaw, get rid of all that pain in here, get rid of the headaches, all right? Jordan, this one's for you. I'm Trav Smashworks, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have an awesome day.